Good morning, my name is Hannah and I'm going to speak to you today about how the church is a gathering of followers. I'm really excited to be bringing this word to you today, I feel really passionate about it, um, but it is an interesting time to be thinking about this particular aspect. Gather isn't a word that we're using very often at the moment and it's been replaced by sc slightly scarier words like distance and isolation and they are scary for me. I'm a complete people person. Last week I started working back at church again and the first morning we decided to meet as a ministry team in church for socially distanced prayers. I didn't initially think too much of that but as I walked through and I saw everything again I remembered that it had actually been about six months since I'd set foot in there. As a bit of a background to me if you don't know me very well, I grew up there. As a child that was my second home and as I was reflecting on that building and what it meant to me, I started thinking about the impact that the building itself can have on us. We are a community and a family in church. People are generally kind and welcoming. We normally have hot drinks and biscuits. There's normally kids running around. Um, and we spend time talking and sharing with one another. So it makes sense that we would feel home to that. <laughs> and because of that, it is okay to feel a little sad that we're not there as we normally would be. But I was reminded of something uh, that somebody once said to me. Um, and I've kind of slightly jigged it about a bit, but going off what they said, the idea of Jesus preaching in the same building week after week is just about as unusual as virtually participating in a church service on Zoom or Facebook. The fact is that you'd find Jesus on street corners in the synagogue, on the mountains, round the dinner table, on the sea, on the land, on a boat, wherever, talking and sharing God with others and his disciples. Whilst we're navigating the odd and the new for gathering, it's easy to forget that church as a building isn't actually a Jesus thing, it's a human thing. It's an incredible and it's a lovely human thing. But church is actually so much broader and much more than an event on a Sunday. Church to me is certainly more than a building. It's a place where I can learn and communicate with God. It's praying with my friends, it's loving each other, it's worshipping together, it's community. And church is a place for people who love God to meet with him and each other. But these things remain as church when we leave the building. And however we end up meeting with one another, they're still the same. The building with nice windows isn't a necessity to being church and gathering together. And though this was once the norm when Jesus and his disciples were sharing faith, this is massively out of our comfort zone because a lot of the things that we've ever known is church as a building and that's where we go to worship. Our readings today go back to the church before it was a construct. We are going to head right back into the early church in Acts and we're going to look at Jesus in the gospel talking to the Father. And as we follow these passages, we're going to look at what gathering as a church is at its very core. In our reading in Acts, Peter and John have just come back from teaching in Jerusalem. A man has been healed and it's magnificent, but their teaching and what they have done is causing a bit of a stir with the priests and the elders. They have come back to their own people and they're relaying what had happened. They're gathered together and in response to what they have heard, they raise their voices together in prayer to God. So they gather and they raise their voices together. They meet with God in the same praise, in the same prayer. In our gospel reading, Jesus prays to the Father that we as believers may be one in the same way that him and the Father are one. Because we believe and accept Jesus as Lord, we can be brought to the same complete unity. And in that unity, we can show the world who God is. Purely based on belief, we are unified with others before anything else. 
So we've got these two examples of what it is to be believers together. Raising our voices together and being in the same unity that the Father and the Son share. And then in verse 31 of our Acts reading, it says, After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Note that it doesn't specify what that place was. It doesn't say the usual church building that we all know and love. Simply, it wasn't about where they were. It was about the people, the people raising their voices to the Lord, the people praising and asking God to help them, the people joining in one voice and stepping into God's presence together. So the place was shaken, but that's not all. It doesn't stop there. The people were then filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God boldly. So by believing and joining together, they have created a unity that replicates that of the Father and the Son. And now they're raising their voices together in God's presence. They've been filled with the Spirit and they have been equipped. So gathering as believers isn't just as simple as having good company in a big group. And it's not about the place. It's where we as people are transformed by the Holy Spirit and through that become completely one with each other. So this is where all the pragmatic and practical people are having a little panic. We've talked very conceptually and we've talked about what a church gathering can look like at its core biblically but the practical people are shouting how how are we going to do that <laughs> and I get it I'm one of those people sometimes too if we can't physically gather together how are we going to continue to be a gathering of followers how are we going to do that as we said before gather is a scary and it's a forbidden word right now in this country, we are now not allowed to meet in groups bigger than six. This is a really different image to what I certainly think of church being. We've gone from sometimes hundreds to less than a handful. But this is such a common theme for so many people at the moment. Not just with church, but in general life, people are struggling with this. But as we go through different stages of life, there might actually be more times that a church building and large gathering are hard to find. It could be in the middle of moving house when you haven't found your bearings yet. It might be in the midst of too much going on and a church is the last thing on your mind. It might even be if you have a negative experience of church as an organisation. And sadly, that does happen. So again, we're asking when church is the building, when church as an organisation isn't available, when we're in the middle of a pandemic and we can't gather in groups more than six, how can we replicate and gather in the way that these Bible readings show us? Simply, as mentioned before, we have to move away from the idea that church is only about the building and the big event and go back to what church and gathering is at its core. When describing the church the theologian Karl Barth said the church is simply the crater that reflects the impact of the gospel in history. I'm going to say that again because it took me a, a minute. The church is simply the crater that reflects the impact of the gospel in history. The church is about the people, it's about the believers and this quote sums up what the church is here for, it's the place where God collides with the earth, it's where people see the real impact of the gospel. The church is a gathering of people whose lives have been impacted and transformed by Christ. It's the part of the world where Christ rules and where people live differently as a result of the gospel and differently because of their relationship with God. And what that means is the unity, the raising the voices, the filling of the Holy Spirit can happen anywhere you like. And when that happens, off these transformed people go, the walking, talking church 
sent out boldly and equipped to live out God's word. You and I can be the walking, talking church, not the only on Sunday event, not the hundred plus people church, the walking, talking example of what the gospel has done for us. We can do that anywhere. We can do that on the phone. We can do that two metres apart. We can do it on a bad signal video call. We can do that in the shopping centre with our masks on. What matters more than the where, the when and the how is what. What is the difference? What is the impact? What do our lives look like when we've gathered and experienced God? Over the next few months, we're going to have to look at how to do church and to gather differently. We might be in a building, we might be out of a building, in our homes, in a park, over the phone. But the truth remains that God will meet you wherever you are and whoever you're with. Being a big church is incredible and having the building that we have is incredible. But it can sometimes be a safety net. This pandemic has completely flipped us over, but what comes through is that actually we can work past the obvious challenges, but not on our own strength. I want to talk to you now about a particular friend that I have. Um, she's brilliantly wise and creative. And when she's faced with a new thing, a big change, a scary unknown, she stops for a moment. She pauses. She takes a moment to ask God how she can be used in this new thing. And what happens is her fear and confusion over the unknown is transformed into opportunity seeking excitement. She stops, she invites God in and she gets excited. Maybe you're a natural at putting a positive spin on things. Maybe it's really hard for you. Being good at it doesn't make the hard thing any easier. This is still hard. But what it does mean for us is that whether you're a natural opportunist or not, you don't have to do this on your own strength. As things continue to change, as we take one step forward and sometimes two or three steps back, as we face a new normal, I want to invite you to look past the building with nice windows. To look past Sunday mornings and live worship and to reflect on what church is at its core. And to do that this morning, I want us to try my friend's method. Let's pause for a moment. Let's invite God in and let's let him and allow him to transform us. Amen.